welcome to Kama Monster. It's Musan Sir here and uh, you are joining today to learn about the design and rating of a shell and tube type heat exchanger. First of all, the shell and tube type of heat exchanger is very efficient for large heat transfer rates and large fluid flow rates with high contact area because there is a shell in which a fluid flows and there are lot of tubes in which other fluid flow. And this is the background information and uh, we do not require it much as it is easily available on the internet. Let's move toward the design. Okay, first of all, uh, our question always has been uh, what features, what characteristic or what, what data we require to start our design. I will categorize or classify it into, the, into four types. First, we require the mass balance how much mass of the hot stream is being flowing. We have to know what is a hot stream and what is a cold stream. The hot stream is whose temperature is decreased by the cold stream, whose temperature increase on the opposite side of the flow. There are also two types. It can be uh, counter current or co current, in which the two streams, hot stream and cold stream, flows opposite to each other. That is the counter flow. And in co-current, the hot stream and cold stream flow parallel to each other in the same direction. Okay, if we have the mass balance, then the second question will be, what is the Q, the heat exchanged? The heat exchange will be same, whether based on the hot, uh, hot fluid temperature difference or whether it is based on the cold fluid temperature difference because the formula is same mcp delta t and whatever heat one stream will uh, will absorb or release the other stream will absorb the same amount of heat and there are always two questions what the parameter next we have to find if you have mass fixed then you can find what other fluid delta t will be and if you have delta t fixed for example your water your cooling water is entering at 25 degrees centigrade and uh, it is leaving at 60 degrees centigrade so your question will be what will be the mass of water that will absorb the heat between this temperature range or if you have mass fixed for example you are doing the pinch analysis or energy optimization in which your reactor or equipment outlet that is hot being cooled by its feed so the energy is maintained and uh, so energy difference is maintained and your heat is optimized in basic term okay the next we will the next answer will uh, question will be the selection of design parameters okay it is uh, uh, almost the basic uh, kind of confusion that most of we have during the design of a shell and tube heat exchanger the selection of design parameters is generally based on the heuristics and literature data. For example, we have two fit shell standard size with 24 inches in uh, two fit is equal to uh, 24 inches. Schedule number 40, average wall thickness, shell ID. These all are the standard size data. And you can select any type of shell or tube side configuration like two pitch, baffle spacing, you can say this is this is important thing to understand one four one four means one shell pass and four tube passes shell and tube heat exchanger you can set any type of design parameters here but if your nobody will ask any type of questions but if your results like pressure drop your dirt factor your heat transfer coefficients are lower or you cannot achieve your desired heat exchange in a single heat shell and tube heat exchanger then anyone can question your selection regarding the design parameters. So you have to understand properly what is the heuristics and literature data related to the selection of the design parameters. Like I have here the vapor flows. So we know vapor uh, take large area. So I have selected a larger, largest, you can say, because it is larger in standard range, two fit shell NPS and tube inches very optimum because tubes can be arranged in a number and contact can be increased otherwise. Okay, the next step is the fluid allocation. The fluid allocation can be based on the number of reasons. Uh, it is based on the heuristics that high amount of fouling, corrosive or uh, 
the fluid that can produce cocking at high temperature it must, must be placed in in the tubes or the larger fluorates must be placed in the larger fluorates must be placed in the larger area like shell may be larger in the most cases so you you have to check whether to place it the fluid allocation depends on the proper reasoning the next step is the the most important step actually the next step is the property data for the heat transfer calculations okay for the heat transfer you have to find the tube site and shell site properties that are required for the calculation of the heat transfer coefficient especially for uh, like you need density viscosity thermal conductivity here we have mixed diesel the specific heat capacity one of the problems uh, we students face is during design is when you have a multi component mixture for example you have a hydrocarbon mixture with methane ethane butane propane and you want to calculate a single density viscosity for the process the beauty of designing shell and tube heat exchanger is that you do not have to concern what type of components or what nature of components you have you only have to found, find out these four to five properties that are required for calculation of heat transfer coefficient so you can found it easily you can find out individually all then for example methane you have methane ethane butane three components are present in a mixture you have to calculate the density you have to find or calculate the density of all three gases uh, for example if our gases we can use pm over rt or if it is liquid or uh, gas or solids you can find it from nist s plus data when we will start s plus i will define how to find the properties of com all components easily then you can take the average like uh, you have 50 percent methane 30 percent butane 20 percent propane you can multiply mole fractions of those components with each of the density and then some summation of it will show the cumulative density of that pseudo stream same say, uh, same thing can be taken for the shell side the property data for the cold stream will be consistent of same parameters the next step is the calculation of temperature correction factor the temperature correction factor is actually very important when you have a large large range so the temperature effectiveness will decrease if you have a large range so heat exchange will be based on the temperature correction factor or corrected lmtd that is related with it first you have to calculate the p1 the formula can be easily found find out on the internet or reference book like the golden time books d k Kern. you can use it it is very best having any every type of references for the design of heat exchanger the next step is you have to calculate the s and w from these formulas that are shown and it it, uh, it are also easily available in the chapter number six design of a counter current heat exchanger the temperature correction factor after you have to un calculate the lmtd so you can correct it by using that f the log mean temperature distribution can be found uh, we, we can use the arithmetic mean but log mean temperature distribution is more accurate generally for the heat exchanger when the counter current flow is involved or there are the larger differences between the two heat exchanging zones so we can calculate the lmtd using the formula delta t1 remember the delta t1 will be equal to the t1 minus t2 because there is uh, we have assumed here the counter current flow and t1 of hot fluid will be in contact with the at the same length of exchanger at the same point in of length with the t2 of cold fluid entering of heat exchanger hot stream will be facing the outlet of cold stream of heat exchanger so that is the difference delta t1 and delta t2 after that you have found the lmtd using the formula you have to correct it by multiplying it with the temperature correction factor ft the next is the calculation of the heat transfer area of the tubes. Number of calculating the number of tubes is always has been very important and there are two ways. First, by as using the assumption of overall heat transfer coefficient. You can assume that, for example, U0 is equal to 1000 BTU per hour fit square degree F or some kind of 500, whatever you want. 
Or, but this is a long iterative process, and to achieve accuracy, you have to at least do more, most of the time three to four iterations. The second is by assuming an acceptable fluid velocity in, the, in your tube. Like I have assumed for the gases case, I have assumed a 10 feet per second. Then I have calculated the area of the single tube. Area is equal to phi d naught square over 4. This is the area of single tube in inches. So for number of tubes, I have to multiply that single tube area with the number of tubes. And there are two number of tube passes, so the overall area will be divided by two. The fluid is passing through each tube two times in a pass. Okay, the G will be equal to the your mass flow rate in LB moles per hour. If you have the flow rate in kilomoles per hour, you can convert into LP moles per hour by multiplying by 2.2. Here I have used the uh, calculated directly multi multiplying 2.2 multiply 2 4.4. And here the formula of G is set mass flow rate over area. Now we ha can calculate the velocity using the G over density. Velocity has been set like I have changed it again to 20 feet. You can change it anywhere like 30, 40, 50, maximum 100 is acceptable for the superheated stream or high pressure gaseous fluid streams. The G over P, the density is 11.2 LB, LB per fit cube and 3600 is for hour to second conversion. By solving this, iterating this equation, we can find the number of tubes. Like here, the number of tubes are calculated to be from this equation, 314.76 number of tubes can be accommodated in the shell. Now we will move toward the calculation of the tube side film coefficient. Area of n tubes, area of single tube multiplied by number of tubes. We can get the area of n tubes, the G is here and we have to first calculate the Reynolds number. Reynolds number is equal to the G multiply inner diameter of tube that is 0 0.083 inches no, fit or 1 inches. Okay, this is the viscosity of the fluid and 1.71 is the area. I have to uh, mass flow rate over area is equal to G. Now we can see we can divide the fluid flow regions into three types, laminar, transition, or fully turbulent flow. We can see here the Reynolds number is greater than, far greater than 4000. So here we will use the this equation. Nussel number equation can be different based on your flow regimes. Like we have turbulent flow, we can use this equation. The laminar flow, the equation will be slightly different. Here will be 1.85 multiplied Reynolds frontal di over u and for transition region 2100 to 4000 there will be use of housing equation that is different 125 their factor is and the structure is slightly different so the frontal number you can see I have not defined before, before viscosity multiplies cp over k k is the conductivity of the fluid not not the valve we are assuming that the controlling one is the tube because the metal or metal that has been used in the tube has very large conductivity compared to it so the controlling one will be the thermal conductivity of the fluid inside the tube so we will use the thermal conductivity of the fluid inside the tube telling again after calculating the nusselt number from using the formula we know that the nusselt number is equal to the HI heat transfer coefficient di inner diameter over k. From here we can find the HI. Now this is not effective actually because it is telling us the heat transfer coefficient inside the tube. But the heat exchange is actually taking place by a uh, by a fluid outside the shell. So the shell sh shell side fluid will, will be contact with the outer surface of the tube. So we have to convert that inner coefficient to outer coefficient using the effective diameter ratio like we have our outer diameter 1.1275 inches and inner diameter of tube 1 inches so from this ratio we have calculated hi node inner to outer inner relate outer coefficient based on the inner surface outer coefficient based on the inner surface so we 
it comes out to be any value depends upon what you have gained like 454.8 we have calculated the next is calculating the area of the shell the area of the shell can be calculated by using the effective diameter of the shell uh, effective or equivalent diameter of the shell or um, subtracting the total area of shell from the total area of tubes so we get here like 2.96 was total area of shell and 1.71 was total area of tubes we get the area of shell 1.25 i have told before the area of shell can be smaller or can be larger based on the number of tubes that we put inside the shell okay enough for today the second and last part of the design of shell and tube heat exchanger will be uploaded soon on the camo monster so stay updated stay tuned and stay with us thank you